Frank's Red Hot is the perfect blend of flavor and heat. So you can use an entire bottle to make recipes like buffalo chicken dip or buffalo nachos. Or even things that don't start with buffalo. Frank's Red Hot. I put that shit on everything. Hello, Craig. Episode 135, the Cal Bullshit Preview. Um, I'm Craig Powers. With me, as always, Jeff Neusser. Yes. Um, yeah, Good man. Design. So, Cal Bullshit Week is here. Yeah. So, you, I know you went on a Cal podcast. I How did. do they feel? How do they feel about <laughs> Cal Bullshit Week? You know, it's funny, like, you know, so we remember the bullshit from the last few years. They remember the bullshit before that that kind of went the other way, right? So there was like the uh, The fumble game. 2013, right, where we were like, you know, we won by like three touchdowns despite getting outgained because they kept turning the ball over inside the 10-yard line. Yeah. Um, You know, yeah, they just they expect crazy things to happen. Um, I think we we definitely feel like it is tilted uh, much more the direction of Cal. Just when we start, like, you know, thinking about, uh, uh, you know, like 2014 or whatever. And then like um, 2015, 2017, like uh, I was when they won in 2018. I know I was at that game in 2018 and it was like, good God, like. You know, I, I just remember the uh, I can't remember who did it, but I remember the fumble at the goal line that, uh, you know, where we were, we were on our way to a pick six and then the ball gets, you know, fumbled and the game was closer than it should have been for much longer yep. uh, than it should have been. So anyway, yeah. And then and then 2019, of course, was was bad also. So uh, I, I feel like it's tilted uh, our direction. They they I think just sort of are like wacky things happen when we play. And I'm like, yes, but, you know. It goes, it goes, it goes our direction, but I, you know, I can't, uh, I can't fault them too much. I love Cal fans. I, Cal's kind of my, my PAC 12 side piece. Like, um, when I used to play NCAA football, I used to like, like towards the end there when it was finishing up, Cal was like my go-to team. Mm-hmm. I loved playing with them. Uh, they and had they Shane had to play WSU all the time, Shane Vereen and Javid best. Oh, you and mean, it was so just for single games. They yeah. Were yeah. Team. Yeah, I would. I had fun playing with them, and like I loved their yellow uniforms. I don't know if you remember that when they used to wear those gold uniforms. I don't know why, but I loved them. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so I I've, I just kind of always had an affinity for Cal. Uh, the one time I've been to Berkeley uh, for a Cougar game, I had a great time. Uh, Cal fans were like super cool, super chill. Um, they were super nice. There was one guy who was an asshole at a pizza place, and the the entirety of the rest of the restaurant turned on him because they because <laughs> he was not being nice to the guest. And I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. So yeah, so I I had a great time. Uh, in fact, I I, I kind of think sometimes like if I had uh, if I had actually visited Berkeley when I was in high school, I might have I might have tried to go there. Like I love I love Uh-oh. Berkeley. So I know. I know. So I, I love Berkeley. Cal fans are great. Uh, I've got kind of a, you know, a special relationship with all the all the people over there at Write for Cal, uh, which used to be mm-hmm. it's all the people who used to write for California Golden Blogs. Um, they're just awesome people. So, yeah. So it's uh, it's hard for me to get get too worked up about it. But but I, you know, I also, I also hope that we cause them maximum pain this weekend. So, of course, of course. Yeah, of course. So um, let's uh, let's start with our offense against their defense, as we always do. Um, yeah. Big surprise for me, you know what what they said 
coming into the season, coming into the last multiple seasons, is if Cal can just – if Justin Wilcox can just have an offense, like Cal could break out, right? Right. So all they needed was an offense because you know yes. that the defense is going to be good under Justin Wilcox. Yes. Well. Well. Well, Cal's <laughs> one and three, and I will tell you, it is not because of the off the defense <laughs> offense. It's, yeah, it is. It's not it the is, offense's fault that they haven't won more than one game. Cal is eighty sixth in EPA per play, which is bonkers. Eighty sixth on defense per play allowed, uh, and then they're on when it comes to success rate, they're a little better, but still not what they have been. They're they're fifty eighth in success rate allowed. So they're only middle of the road nationally when it comes to, you know, stopping teams from getting those minimal gains that keep you on the chains, and they're really bad at giving up explosive plays. What I mean, they the heck gave, happened? They gave up 467 yards to Sacramento State. To Sacramento State. 467. They are currently – so Craig, Craig's got all the fancy stats – uh, they are currently 94th in yards per play and also currently just like I can tell you yards per game, which, of course, is, you know, not the greatest stat in the world, but people like it. 96th. So they're currently 94, 96. And you'll, you'll never guess who's 95, Craig, in yards per game. That would be Washington Cougs? State. Yeah. Yeah. We are one spot ahead of Cal. Our defense is better than Cal <laughs> or something. We're actually it's better allowing, than Justin Wilcox's defense. Yeah, we're allowing fewer yards per play too. So, how about that? Suck on that, Wilcox. How about it? How about it? So, yeah, Cal's <laughs> defense not yeah. great. No, um, it's bizarre. So they, uh, yeah, they've been they've been giving up, you know, chunks in the passing game. Uh, so passing. Uh, defense, you know, they've, they've given up some big games. Uh, they gave up 408 yards in the air, you know, only 7.4 yards attempt for not that bad, <laughs> but still to even do that against yeah. Sacramento state. Yes. Uh, you know, you dub had 7.3 Nevada, 8.0 yards attempt. So like not big yards per, per attempt, but they're giving up enough. And then, so their EPA per pass is, in the hundreds, like, you know, well into the hundreds. So that they're not a good pass defense. They're rush defense. They're 70th in EPA per rush. Uh, they're averaging, um, you know, they, they gave up 5.42 yards per carry to TCU. Uh, they were much better against Washington, but I don't think anyone is impressed with Washington's offense other than maybe no. Arkansas State. <laughs> um, no. they did, they were good against Nevada and they were good against Sacramento state on the ground, but TCU, uh, shredded them, tore them. I mean, up. overall, overall been pretty decent. I mean, there's that, this is the with sacks, uh, but they, they still have only, they only have six sacks through four games. So that's not impacting the numbers too much. Um, but yeah, so it's just, they're just not the defense that they were not not in pass, especially in passing. They're giving up big plays. Um, I'm sorry, I was looking at WSU. They're 75th in EPA pass. That's still not good. They're no. 85th in EPA rush. That makes a lot more sense to me when I was looking at the stats. So WSU is in the hundreds in EPA per pass. If you're if you're shocked by that, um, so but no. they're but I was right. They are 86 in EPA per play and 58th in success rate. So they're decent at stopping teams from. You know, getting that five yard first down, getting that seven yard first down, but they're not good when it comes to giving up those chunk plays. No, on in passing or de- rushing. So this is just it's crazy. But the problem is, in the past, you'd be like, okay, this is a team that WSU can move the ball on. Then if the, if this is what they're giving up, WSU can put up points. But not this year. No, well. Yeah, I mean, a little bit in the first half, not so much in the second half, uh, sometimes not even in the first half. It kind of depends. I don't know. I think we kind of felt like uh, Cal had a little bit of, like, air raid kryptonite, so maybe 
you know, I don't know. Maybe things maybe things are better now with with you know it not being the air raid. Are 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 they are they better uh, as we sit at ninety eighth in EPA <laughs> per play on offense, eighty ninth in mean, success rate. I'm just uh, saying. 96th EPA per rush with Max Borgie. Uh, you know, maybe <laughs> his missing a half, like, turn, dialed that down. Yeah. Uh, and then 93rd in EPA per pass. Like, yeah. WSU's offense has literally not been good no. at anything. No, it hasn't. Um, this just comes as no surprise to anyone no. listening to this podcast. No, I mean, if you've watched them, like... <laughs> Like, I mean, look, like when, uh, you know, when I was on that Cal podcast, he's like, you know what? Tell me what you think of your team. And I'm like, we stink. Like, I don't know what else to say. Like, like we're bad and we've been bad. Um, and there's there's not, uh, you know, there, there's there's not a lot of reason to think it's it's going to get better. Um, it, you know, the, if there's a chance Delora will play and that's better than Garantano. Yeah. Um, there's a chance that Borgie will play and that's good. Yes. Um, so, you know, Col- uh, Colton Clark reported both of those, those yesterday, um, of the spokesman, now yeah. the spokesman Colton Clark. Yes. Um, uh, so yeah. So if they play, that's better. Yes. Um, having a full game of Borgie would be better. Having Delora over Garantano is better. So they definitely can be better than those like bleak numbers that I just quoted. Um, but still, even with Delora and Borgie, this offense was not lighting anyone on fire aside from maybe Portland state. No. Yeah. I, I, I'm really curious to see what happens on Saturday. I mean, like, I guess that's kind of the whole season, right? Is like, I'm very curious about, whatever like thing, are we really right? this bad <laughs> like, like every every week are we really this bad you know i i i got the sense that rolovich felt like so from his his post game uh news conference i got the sense that he felt like uh that they, basically just that they left a lot of a, a lot of plays out there on the field and, and specifically uh garantano you know they asked him about asked rolovich about the the last interception the pick six was the last interception, I guess, but the pick six, right? Um, yeah. And just was was like, you know, hey, what, you know, was it just a miscommunication there? And and obviously there was a miscommunication. But Rolovich said, well, it, you know, that that was, yeah, that throw should have gone, probably gone to the backside. That throw should probably should have gone to the backside. He said that a couple times, and I'm like, that's kind of, like, if there's one thing I'll give him credit for is that, um, you know, he he does not air his players out in public. Now, I don't necessarily think that's, you know, a hard and fast, like, great thing. Like, I mean, Leach did that from time to time, right? Um, you know, and he caught a lot of guff for that. Um, I don't necessarily think there's a right or a wrong way unless the coach is, you know, trying to absolve himself of responsibility, which is not what uh, not what Leach ever did. People always kind of forgot to do the, the second half of the quote where he was like, you know, I, I, we need to teach it better. We need to coach it better. Um, you know, Rolovich kind of goes out of his way to not, uh, criticize guys in public. And, and that was probably about as close as he's gotten. Um, you know, I just kind of got the sense that yeah. he was, that he's pretty frustrated. And so, you know, I don't know. I mean, maybe, you know, I just like, kind of listening to him. And again, I don't, um, you know, my faith in him is obviously gone, but uh, he feels like it seems like just kind of reading between the lines and in, inferring things from what he's saying that he feels like they're pretty close to breaking out. Um, that there are plays there to be made and they just need to be made. And um, somehow the coaching staff's got to get them over the hump. And um, so, uh, you know, I, I guess we'll see. Uh, but maybe, you know, maybe some of that's here. I mean, Cal's Cal's pass defense wasn't good last year either. Um, and I know everybody, you know, kind of goes, ah, you know, it's a short season and, you know, whatever. But, uh, but you know, as we've seen this year, you know, I mean, some of that stuff carries over. Uh, you know, we kind of saw that, you know, with some of the things that have happened with our team that, you know, things that we might have been trying to dismiss as just being, a, you know, a function of a short season, maybe, maybe actually weren't that. So, uh, you know, it's it, Cal's Cal's past defense been suspect for, you know, going on two seasons now. And I don't know, maybe we can take mm-hmm. advantage of that. Yeah, hopefully um, it, 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 if, if Delora is the quarterback, it, it's, he still hasn't had a ton of time in this offense. You know, he had, he had the the short season 
um, where he's missing practice quite a bit because of COVID and stuff. And then uh, he missed spring ball, um, and he missed last week of practice before Utah because he was hurt. So if they're close to breaking out, it's like with who? You know, right. Is it with Delora that they're close to breaking yeah. out? Uh, maybe he thinks that Delora is starting to – pick it up because you know what they've been running with the Laura is hardly a true run and shoot there's a right. lot of you know read option there's some RPOs like it's not exactly what uh Rolovich was running in Hawaii although he was running you know read option and stuff there but it's they, they're not running a, as because they should be throwing the ball more than they do even even though we're frustrated Borgie doesn't get as many ru- touches as he does but in Hawaii, he was throwing the ball a lot more than this, and they're they're just not yet. Because and and sometimes you kind of feel that it's because the quarterbacks have not really had the grasp of what they're supposed to do, and it could also be the receivers, obviously, because they even the veteran guys have not been in this system as long, and and it's pretty different in terms of route running versus the air raid, where you just run the same route right. all the time. And here you're reading that you now it's on you to read. Uh, there was some reading, you know, with like dropping in the holes in the mesh and stuff. But, but you know, for the most part, you're running the same routes over and over again. But th- so, I don't know. It, maybe maybe the receivers are starting to figure it out. Obviously, we think that Calvin Jackson made the right choice on that on that ball, and maybe Delora would have heaved it. Who knows? Yep. Um, so maybe yeah, that that's why. So it's kind of hard to tell like are we really this bad on offense like it seems like with e- even losing some of the receivers they did you would think they had enough talent to be better than this yeah and they just haven't haven't yep. been like it, it it's it's that's been the big disappointment this year so far like we were hoping the defense would be better and they haven't been but the offense being so bad is is kind of like okay that that turns us from being you know, a fun, bad team to just being a bad, bad team. And yeah. that sucks. And as you always say, that's like the ultimate sin is, <laughs> that's a, right. is a boring, bad team. Don't be bad and uninteresting. At least at least be interesting if you're going to be bad. Um, I, I think this a lot of this, honestly, just goes back to what I talked about in our, you know, when we were previewing the season, really. And people were, you know, very excited about the season and, um some people were right and, and had, you know, they felt like there was a ton yeah. of talent on offense. And I was like, we got to a point under Mike Leach where we just took excellent to incredible quarterback play for granted. Like starting in like 2014 up through 2019, we got something ranging from good to incredible quarterback play. Right. I mean, like the worst the worst thing we had was 2017 Luke Falk. Like that was the worst thing we had. And he was still pretty good. Like he wasn't he wasn't as good as he had been. And he had regressed and, you know, all those things that we sort of lamented at the time. But he still was, you know, compared to his peers, you know, in the Pac-12. I mean, he was still like an average to above average quarterback, at least. Right. Right. And so we had gotten basically used to the idea that, hey, this this is what this is what it is. A lot of our fans had. And, um, you know, I know when I would watch, you know, Pac-12 football or college football in general over those years, I, I would just sort of be amazed at how both how bad some of the other quarterbacks were um, and just how consistent we were. And I'm like, you know, all these other schools have had just these absolute turds taking you know snaps they're they're terrible they can't play you know it's like uh, it was like kind of a running joke on slack with our defense like oh our defense is so good yeah but who look at the quarterbacks they've played remember like in like in 2017 if you remember that we used to joke about that and be like well they they seem to be playing bad quarterbacks every week and i'm like yeah that's because like there aren't that many good quarterbacks in college football like like most teams have bad quarterbacks and we are now one of them. And I'm not saying Jaden Delora is a bad quarterback, but what I am saying is we are not getting good quarterback play. And we, yeah. we have just like, you know, for like, like six years, six years running, we had very good quarterback play and most of the time, really good quarterback play. And now it's like, so when people are sort of projecting the season and going, well, look at, you know, look at these wide receivers, look at Borgie and experienced offensive. Line. And I'm like, yeah, but who's going to throw the ball? 
And after what I saw last year, yeah, I mean, there was potential with Delora, and I still think he can be a very good quarterback, but he's not that right now. And I didn't think he was probably going to be that this year. And so that's that's where it's like, man, yeah, they do have tons of weapons. They've got tons of guys, but like, you know, they, they just they're not getting the ball in the right spot with the right space. And, and you know, without a guy pulling the trigger who can do that, your the, the upside of your offense is just extremely limited. Yeah. So on that note, let's uh, let's talk about the other side of the ball where. WSU, of course, is very good, and there's <laughs> nothing to worry no, about. No, nothing to worry about. Uh, Cal's offense has, you know, not been great, but they've been pretty good. They're uh, 48th in EPA per play. Uh, they're actually 16th in success rate. Ooh. Um, a lot of that is because their ground game has been pretty solid. Um, a lot of that was against Sacramento State, but still, uh, it's also Chase Garbers is has been quite a threat. So once again, Kook fans, I'm sorry to tell you, <laughs> mobile quarterback. Are you okay? Yeah. Are, are we all is okay? Is everybody still are upright? Okay? Are we still okay? Um, yeah, so Garbers, when he's not getting sacked, when he's just running the ball, you know, he take out the sack rush yards, he's getting like nine yards of carry, and he's running fairly often. He's like so, 75% like, of their offense or 80% of their offense right now. Yeah, so he's run the ball. He runs the ball five or six times a game and picks up, you know, when he's taken off, picking up nine, ten more yards, nine, nine or ten more yards, like every every time. So he's... He's quite a threat. Um, and then they have Damian Moore, who uh, definitely uh, padded his stats a bit against Sacramento State, but he's also going to get the ball a lot. And so overall, with Chase, Garbers, and Moore, they're 12th in EPA per rush right now. I honestly think that's Garbers picking up some big gains with his feet. Um, so, yeah, like you got to watch out for him. And the but. So, sorry, my my damn headphones disconnected. Again. <laughs> I was um, like, "You okay?" But they can't. They they just they just do this thing where they cut out and then they, they say lost and then they connect. It's like, why did you lose it in the first place if you immediately connected again? I will. Um, I will edit. Anyways, I will so, edit that out. <laughs> sure, you will. I will. Um, I am. There. I am. Like so. Pause for like five seconds, and then I can edit it out. Nah, I'll leave it in. Um, so the, <laughs> so their, e, their EPA per pass is, is 70. So their passing game that not, not a, not a big explosive thing. They do have some dangerous receivers though. They got, uh, Tra Trayvon Clark is 13 catches for 267 yards, 20 and a half average. So he's your scary guy. They got Tongas, the big ass tight end who, and right, right up there next to mobile quarterbacks, big ass tight ends will s scare the bejesus out of Cougar oh, fans. Yeah. So um, they they're not a great offense, you know. They're they're but they have been. If, if you paired this offense with 2019 Cal defense, then you know they they're uh, they're that team that everyone is always hope like thinking they might become. Right. But of course, their defense has taken a dip. But their offense has been pretty solid. And then, of course, against WSU's offense, which has their best their best against the run, still not that great. Very bad against the pass. Very bad overall. Uh, it's you know, you the, Cal's offense is better than Utah's offense by quite a margin, and Utah's offense was held down for a lot of that game, but also was able to have some drives where they had some chunk plays and scored pretty easily. Yeah. And I see Cal uh, definitely being able to outperform what Utah did, maybe be closer to what, you know, and better what you, than Utah State. So, you know, but maybe not at the level of USC, but still, I, I still think they're going to be able to move the ball on WSU fairly frequently. Yeah, I, th I think it's pretty clear this is probably the second best 
offense we faced and and Utah I, I think exposed a little bit our, our our sort of our soft middle um in a way that you know the other the other teams have not been able to you know it wasn't a huge surprise um that you know maybe you know Portland State wasn't able to really run the ball on us Utah State did in the second half um kind of pound away at it and then have some success running the ball uh, you know, USC, they, I don't know, maybe they could have had they needed to, uh, in the second half, they but, really but they, they didn't really try cause they didn't, they need to were throwing the ball over the yard. So, uh, no real chance there. And then of course, like I said, Utah, Utah kind of went to work, uh, running the ball on us. So I, I think there's a real chance that, that, that becomes a real problem, uh, on Saturday, uh, with Cal just sort of manning up and, and they like to go with sort of big heavy sets and, um, or at least they have. I don't know. I, I I presume that's what they're doing again this year. I haven't watched them much, but um, you know they they've tended to like to go big, tight ends, things like that. Um, just kind of run the ball at you. Um, you know, Garber's a big kid. He'll run the ball. Um, so you know, our our defensive line, as we know, our interior is 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 pretty small, smallish. I think we got a couple guys listed at three hundred, but I don't think they're actually three hundred. Um, so, you know, when I, when I look at them, they don't, they don't quite pass the eye test for, um, they don't quite pass the eye test for, uh, for 300 pounders. But, uh, I th- so I think that's a part that, that could end up being a real, a real issue. Um, the one thing I've kind of got my eye on, so obviously I sort of poo pooed a little bit the, uh, the turnovers that the defense secured, uh, last weekend saying it's, it's not really a skill. It's not really repeatable. Uh, but we do have a fair amount of takeaways this year. So so this might be a game to kind of maybe prove me wrong uh, because, you know, Cal's a little teensy bit, you know, turnover prone, um, you know, not hugely, but but, you know, they'll they will turn the ball over a little bit. So we'll see. Uh, you know, they lost th- they, have four, they lost three well, they have, against Washington they have four. They have four. They have four turnovers in four games, yeah. and yeah, three of those came against Utah. Yeah, so uh, you know they lot. You know, Garbers has thrown four interceptions. It looks like this year. So um, three, three or four? Are you sure? Or four? You're right. Okay. Four. Yeah. yeah. So so anyway, seven touchdowns, four interceptions. Not a great, you know, not the kind of ratio you're necessarily looking for. So I, I don't know. Maybe the defense. You know, Cal. Sort of Cal's story this year. I've, I've picked up from talking to talking to Cal people is that they, they just have sort of uh, like really killed themselves. Um, whether it's, you know, turnovers or penalties or just ill-timed whatevers, uh, they just have not, uh, executed when they needed to, to, to make the difference in a game. And, um, you know, that, that can sort of cut both ways, right? Like you can either, um, you know, it's, it, it's sort of a, a signal of a flaw, Right. Where, OK, so this team just, you know, can't can't get out of their own way, keep shooting themselves in the foot, blah, blah, blah. OK. Or, you know, maybe you do that a little bit early in the season. You play some close games, have some close losses, and then all of a sudden it clicks. You figure it out and you go off on a run. That's like sort of the the story of the 2015 Cougars. Right. Like where, you know, they count the loss to Cal was one of those. And so it's like, you know, maybe something clicks. You finally figure it out. And you start winning the close games instead of losing the close games. Um, some of that variance starts coming back around to you. So uh, I know it's what Cal fans are hoping for. So I guess, I guess we'll see, you know, I, I think this weekend is going to tell us a lot um, just because, you know, I just like, obviously I've, I've sort of decided that, you know, Rolovich, th- this ain't it, that, that he's not, he's not, um, you know, sort of, he's in over his head, right? Like that's, that's sort of the phrase I've used over and over. Um, you know, Cal is, is sort of in a, you know, sitting there also at one and three, um, you know, they obviously had much higher hopes for this season. Um, and so it just, it sort of feels like a, it honestly feels a little bit like a gut check for both teams. And I guess we'll see, I mean, I know which way I think it's probably going to go, but at the same time, like, you know, I'm open to the idea that, um, you know, that one of these teams is ready to ready to pass a gut check and, and maybe one of them isn't. And, um, you know, who knows, maybe, maybe they'll, maybe the Cougs will surprise me. Yeah. Right now that's, you're talking about Utah is definitely down from what we thought they would be and Cal is as well. Yeah. And so now this season is getting borderline frustrating because if WSU was at just a little bit higher level, these couple games would have been a lot easier than the kind of like guaranteed losses that we gave them 
before this. Maybe not guaranteed, but like have like lean definitely towards losses in these games. Yep. And, and so it's 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 kind of frustrating that WSU just hasn't uh, come out and been very good. Uh, but yeah, like you said, Cal is also not very good. So, uh, you know, Vegas has it at seven and a half. I think Vegas is starting to catch up to us a little bit. Uh, they were definitely overestimating us for a while. Yeah. Um, th- but WSU did cover last week yeah. for the first time. Um, <laughs> Thanks to, you know, three turnovers. But- in- interesting enough, uh, Bill Connolly's line is exactly the same as the Vegas line on this ah. one. Uh, seven and a half points. Okay. Um, so that's, that's where we're at. So let's get into some predictions. If you don't have anything else to say, no, I, I, I don't. Um, so are, are we going to do first half, second half thing again? Hell yeah. All right. That's what we do now. Okay. So I'm going to so give me your first half. So I'm going to go 10, 10 tie game at, at the end of the first half. That's what I'm going for. All what right. About you? All right. Um, let's see. You were the closest last week. I think you got. WS, what was it? Seven to six, but you had thirteen to seven, yeah, or something. So if WSU would have just got a touchdown on that final drive, um, but they sadly they did, did not. not. <laughs> uh, they were so close, though. You were almost right. almost. Um, uh, well, it would have been ten seven. So maybe that's what. No, that's what you said. I said thirteen yeah, yeah. seven. So you almost almost. Had it. Um, but they were up thirteen seven right after. Doesn't count. Um, doesn't count. It doesn't count. Second half. Uh, but WSU did <laughs> score a second half touchdown last yes, week, which did. we love. Um, just have to give them the ball on the 20 yard line. That'd be good. <laughs> yeah. So this is just me delaying because I haven't really made up my mind yet. Um, so I, I'm going to stick with WSU having a lead at, and being up, uh, let's say, 14 10 at halftime. Okay. All right, so you got 10-10, yep. a half. Yep. How are you feeling about that second half? And what's the final score? I'm going to go 31-16, to 16, Cal. 31-16, Cal. Cal pulls away. They start pounding the rocks, start breaking off a bunch of explosive runs. Uh, we kick a couple of wave the white flag field goals, and that's <laughs> – I, I will that's say, it. like, Ro- that's one thing Rolovich doesn't do. Yeah, is kick the wave the white flag field goals. He typically will just, although they haven't been in a position for that yeah. very often, to be yeah. honest. Um, but he he is he does go for it quite a yes. bit, um, except for in a in a one very obvious situation last week. But yeah, um, so yeah, so I had fourteen ten. I'm going to say just randomly WSU gets another touchdown in the second half. Okay. Uh, I'll call it the maybe Delora effect or something. All right. So we get up to 21. Uh, but I, I, I think that Cal's offense finds some big plays. I think their big receiving core becomes a bit much. Uh, you know, that they, they get some big plays in passing. Garbers starts shaking loose. And, uh, yeah, they, they go from 10 points to uh, 34, 34 to 21, Cal. So they cover. Yeah. I'm gonna, we're both going for yep. them to cover. Yep. I think that's uh, – uh, I mean, I don't know. Like, Remember when we used to be super I mean, look, optimistic we, in this part? Look, and we, we sort of joked, like, you know, you, jo- you said that the, the WSU covered against Utah. And, like, it's great. Yes, they covered, except they the reason why they covered is because Utah – like, you know, pooped all over themselves uh, repeatedly. So that's the only thing that... So hopefully, come on, Cal. Yeah, I mean, that. that's the only thing that uh, kept it even sort of close. So, I, you know, maybe that'll happen this week. You know, maybe Cal will... You know, maybe Cal is, you know, in that sort of a space right now where just everything's going wrong. I don't know. Uh, here, what I'm, what I'm really actually hoping for is that, like I said... You know, Cal has seemed to got uh, to get the benefit of the uh, of the bullshit the last few years, and so I'm kind of thinking, you know, the way it is stacked up, right? That we we've got all this cosmic bullshit stacked up over the last few years. Uh, it's time for it to come back this direction. So I I'm I'm hoping for that. And I mean, look, I <laughs> I whenever like whenever people go out on a limb and say the things that that I have said. 
about the coach and about whatever. Like they start to think that we are like like rooting for them to fail. Uh, I'm not. I would the thing I would love the most is for this team to all of a sudden figure it out and rip off you know eight straight wins to end the year, and we all get to party and have fun. Like I am most certainly not rooting. Uh, for his failure and I'm not rooting for the team's failure and I want them to succeed. And like, even when I talk about the turnovers on Saturday, I'm like in the middle of the game, I was enjoying the hell out of it. It's just like af- oh, yeah. after the game, I'm like, yeah, I mean, let's be real about what this actually means. Right. But during the game, I'm like, dude, we're within a score. This is awesome. You know? So, you know, I, I, maybe this weekend is, is that weekend where just crazy shit happens and we get to be happy and, um, enjoy a win. I, you know, it's, this seems like as good a weekend as any, you know, I know Cal fans are nervous about it. There's no doubt about that. I don't think I mentioned that when we were talking about earlier. I mean, they're nervous, like, cause they're just, I mean, their, their team's not good enough. No, to be that's exactly it. Anybody, I mean, as, as confident as I am that we stink, they are as confident that maybe they're not good. Like, like their, their faith in where they were headed, right? Like, you know, improvement is not always linear as we know. And as we watched with, with Mike Leach, right. And you know, as, as much as you want to think improvement, you, you know, in your brain that improvement's not linear, but you also sort of think like improvement should be linear. And then they, um, like you said, you know, they finally have a, a reasonable offense and all of a sudden the defense sucks ass. And it's like, how does that happen? <laughs> right? Like Cal fans are just, they're, they're kind of pulling their hair out. Um, wondering if they, if they can buy a break at some point. So, uh, like I said, I think there's going to be a gut check game really for both teams. Um, you know, Cal, if, if they're going to do something, it's got to start this weekend. Uh, WSU, if they're going to do something, honestly, this is as good as, uh, of an opportunity as any. I know the game's on the road, but um, it really is as good of an opportunity as any. And uh, and they really need to, you know, they, they need to start to show some progress. And the honest truth is, um, just in general, they're not showing progress. And so maybe – you know, maybe there's an opportunity here to to finally show some progress, and and at least the the people who are still kind of holding out that things might get better. Um, you know, maybe they can see something that they can hang their hat on a little bit. Yeah, go out there and surprise us, Cougs. I'm I'm gonna yeah. be uh, probably DVR in the game because we have like photos we're getting taken, Ooh. like a, a family family photos at some like Apple farm or some crap i don't know at like <laughs> at like three like three thirty, so right in the middle of the game so man uh, don't somebody did not plan game, that very Jeff. well jeez well that was planned well i don't know if you know about fucking pac 12 <laughs> football times okay okay so okay. all right all right so amanda pla- amanda planned this picture <laughs> thing like months ago okay because uh, she has her shit together, unlike the Pac-12 TV <laughs> Who schedules. Who plans which things months are given in advance? To us. <laughs> well, you had to. Yeah, this I, is high, high demand. High demand this photographer high, and high demand. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we're going to do that. So I, I figure out maybe okay. I'll start it and then just come back to it later. I mean, do you want me to text you if you, if it's not worth your time? <laughs> I could do that. No, because I can fast forward. That's true. You, know. you can. Yeah. That's true. You're like me. You're you're you can't you can't escape the pain. We live in the pain. I need the I what's need what's the like pain. the bane what's the coming. bane quote right? So we you know you know from you, the pain. You, you know the 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 last cow game that I DVR'd and then went back to later was the thirty seven to three game. God damn it! So good luck, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what we're heading? And for? I remember because like. And, and I kind of realized it was not going well because I knew that I was with some people that were probably checking the score yeah. and they were just were not mentioning the game. Yeah, they yeah. weren't saying anything to no me. No smiles. And then no I nothing. got home. Yeah. I got home and like Amanda went straight to bed <laughs> and like and I was like I'm gonna DVR the game. And then it was like yeah. Luke Falk five interceptions, yeah. thirty seven to three when we were when we were ranked number eight. You know, yeah, yeah. like that was the last. That was yeah. the last game I uh, DVR'd. Uh-huh. There's, the stakes are much lower now, so if yes. we get our asses kicked, I'll yes. just uh, you know I won't take any blame yeah. for that. Yeah, Sarah does that. She'll check the score and then go to bed and and like she'll you know she's very good at hiding what's happening, but she definitely has checked the score. And I'm like, I don't know how you do that. Like I would not, I would not be able to to keep a straight face for that long if I knew if I knew the result and the other person didn't, but. You know, God bless her. The biggest payoff I, I had of doing that once was uh, two years ago, basketball, Arizona State, when uh, CJ hit the game-winning three. Oh, yeah. Buzzer. 
yeah. or right before the buzzer. Like that That's was very one. satisfying. I was like watching yep. it late at night. Everyone yep. else knew what happened, and then yep. I, I get on Twitter and it's like, no one tell Craig what happened. Yep. Like it, so that was that was that was fun. That was. But good. yeah, I'm gonna have to turn off notifications. I'm gonna have to tell people who generally text me things. You know. Yeah. Just leave me the f- fuck alone. I got pictures to take. And... <laughs> gonna be turning on that do not disturb on the phone yep those are always fun all right all right Uh, well uh you know you can follow me for my if you want to watch tweets about the game three hours after it happens you know maybe an hour or two after it happens uh (laughs) at the craig powers it's gonna be hilarious watching you tweet through it after the game's already over yes (laughs) uh which i probably won't do actually i always feel weird Uh, i kind of want it to happen i'm in instagram craig w powers uh you can still enter my raffle until sunday night at eleven fifty nine. 59 yeah. charity raffle i have two separate matches that can happen right now so if you want to donate money uh i have about a hundred dollars worth of matching so you can whatever you donate i can double your entry because i have a couple people that entered Ooh. and they're like well we don't really need the prize and so i'm just using that to match um so yeah if you want to match uh if you want to double your chances with your with your money uh i'm still accepting donations send me them receipts at dm me at the craig powers or at our podcast email podcast vs everyone at gmail.com um so yeah donate to any wsu fund send me send me the a screenshot of the receipt and i'll get you entered and then i'm going to do the drawing on monday and then someone's getting uh, a two queen room for two nights, the Friday through Sunday at the Hilltop. Uh, they're getting two 50 yard line seats underneath the overhang. No rain. Jeff has sat in my when I've sat sat with me under the overhang before. It yes. is awesome. It when is. It is raining. Um, and then you also get an a lot parking pass, which you can park right by Ferdinand. Also dance worth its weight. Get a grabber. Gold. For sure. Yes. So all of those things, 10 bucks gets you an entry. And if you do it, probably soon, uh, $10 gets you two entries. So, because uh, I have about $100 worth of matching. So thank you to uh, the people that did that. So, um, yeah. And Jeff, you can follow him on Twitter. He'll be tweeting during the game his hot takes. <laughs> probably at angrily. Pod VS everyone. I'll probably try and have some fun with my Cal friends. Hopefully not, though. Hopefully not. It'd be awesome if they didn't, if I didn't yeah. do that. It'd be great. I would love to be excited and have fun. Yeah, be- because, Jeff, go Cougs. Go Cougs, Craig. Black Lives Matter. And Black Lives Matter. Get, and always get vaccinated. <laughs> get fucking vaccinated. What is going on?